Hello, everybody. Hope you're doing well tonight. Uh, it's like one o one o eight in the morning here, but I'm doing good. Uh, it was a beautiful day here. It's crazy. We've had cold weather, cold weather, then all of a sudden a beautiful day. Today it's actually really warm here tonight. But I just want to welcome all my sub new subscribers. Thank you for coming and being here. I welcome you, and I'm just really happy you're here. And I want to just say hi to all my regular subscribers. I love you. I'm thinking of you. And I wanted to come on and talk a little bit. I'm going to talk about Summer Wells and, and the Delphi case. So first of all, I want to say something about Summer Wells. Uh, this channel that you see in the picture here on my video, this guy is named Da, D-U-H. Let me go over there so you can see it better. Uh, da Weekly Podcast. This is the guy... And he put out a few videos, this one I just watched, and a few others. Five things you didn't know about Summer Wells' case. I'm not going to play his video because I hope that you'll go over and subscribe. But I am going to tell you what he said. Um, and I hope you will <clears throat> keep an eye. And it sounds like he lives around there by Don and Candace Wells. And so, <clears throat> first of all, uh, a few things stood out to me. Well, basically, the other things were strange, of course, that he said, but what really stood out to me was that <clears throat> somebody seen Don and Candace, one of the neighbors, uh, a few days after Summer went missing in the pouring rain on a dark night, they were parked on the side of the road, and Candace came walking back to the vehicle out of the woods. And like he said, maybe she just went to the bathroom. But, you know, they were only like a mile from their house. Why stop there, you know? Uh, what are you doing? Candace doesn't like to go out, remember? she doesn't. She's scared of everything. She don't like to walk. She don't like to do anything because of the coyotes and blah, blah, blah. Well... Uh, she obviously doesn't mind at night on a rainy night. Uh, why wait? Why not wait till you got home to go to the bathroom? So they were doing something. So if this guy could tell us what road he thinks somebody's seen them on, then we could go search that road. So keep an eye on this channel. <clears throat> It sounds like he's got some things to say, you know, that he knows some things and Don and Candace from around there. So, um, it was very interesting. So I hope you'll go subscribe to him and I don't want to play his video because, you know, he's new. He's just coming out, getting stuff out here. So I recommend you subscribe to his channel. Okay, I want to also mention that, um, from what I heard on Chris McDonough, the interview room, <clears throat> from what I heard on there, he had Billy, the defense attorney on there. Uh, this was like a couple days ago. And they were talking about the Deb Collier, Debbie Collier case or something. But they also talked about Summer Wells' case. Uh, they talked about Don Wells. And... From what I understand, uh, it sounds like Billy, this defense attorney, was telling Chris that there's no way they can prosecute Don for what happened to Mary and Jeannie because the statute of limitations run out. Now, everybody wants to say there's no statute of limitations in Utah, but uh, from what Billy said the other day, there is, and that it'd be really hard to take that case <clears throat> into court, so I don't know. Uh, so it's like 
it's another one of them cases like 30 years old. It's really hard, you know, uh, that these people, they really should have done something sooner, you know. These people are grown adults. Some of them are grown adults and nothing against them. I'm just saying uh, why wait so long. But anyways, I'm not going to get into that. But I wanted to give you that little update. It's no big update on Summer Wells. I still want to know where she is. Uh, we're still searching for her. And if you have any information about Don and Candace Wells or Summer Wells from Kingsport, Tennessee, uh, Rogersville, uh, they live on Beach Creek and Ben Hill Road. So if you know anything, please call 1-800-TBI-FIND. This little girl, Summer Wells, she's only six years old. She went missing June 15th, and it's been a year and a half, and we're still waiting, you know, to hear. Sorry. We're still waiting to hear what's going to happen. So anyways, uh... We cannot find her. We're waiting for TBI to give us an update, and it's very sad. So, she's just a little girl. I also want to say a couple things uh, about Michael Vaughn and Quentin Simon and what I think happened to them. I think Summer Wells was taken with by her mom and dad somewhere that they absolutely know where she is and that they did something to her. <clears throat> I also believe that this little Quentin Simon, I felt it was strange that the father or the boyfriend uh, gave the text at 5.30 in the morning that uh, Quentin was staying with his mom and uh, that they didn't need the babysitter. I have a feeling that that boyfriend took him out of there how else were what else did they do with him did Leilani put him in the trash bag or did uh, her boyfriend take him out of there were they partying all night I mean like does he normally go to work at 5 30 in the morning why would you be up I don't know if that's his work schedule but I do know that is strange that they gave him that, he made that text. And then all of a sudden, when Lilani gets up, it's like 9.30 in the morning. And she don't know where her baby is. But, you know, uh, I really don't think that Quentin, being his age, would sleep until 9.30 in the morning, whatever, when she woke up. Uh, I mean, it seems like she would know a lot sooner if she was getting up. And I don't really know any little two-year-olds that sleep. Past 9.30, it's not impossible, but uh, it seems like she would have known a lot earlier. And uh, maybe, maybe they partied all night. And maybe there was a fight. Maybe something happened. They didn't pay attention to him. But I think somebody did something to him. But I have a feeling it's probably the boyfriend that took him out of there. Also, the same with Michael Vaughn. He's missing out of uh, Fruitland, Idaho. And I think that his mom or dad took him out of there. How do you know he went missing that afternoon? Do they have him on video that afternoon? could have went a lot earlier, but who else left? His mother left, and she could have took him with her, or the father could have took him somewhere. So I just, I find it really strange. Um, so those are just my opinions, and that's all. So now, I just want to, uh, I got to talk about the, uh, Delphi murder. Abby and Libby, and they were two young girls. And they were found in the woods. Let's 
excuse me, Delphi, Indiana, and they were walking on the bridge, and I don't know what is going on with my, all of a sudden my TV ain't doing nothing, so I have to wait for a minute, I guess. Oh, there it goes. Took a minute to load. I want to show you something. Uh, okay. Um, this person, their channel is called, uh, let me show you. Image analysis and detection. And let me tell you something. They went deep. And they looked into this picture and everything very deep. And they did an excellent job. And I just want to show you a few of these clips. Because, it, you know, they know that this is the bridge guy. So, that Ron is the bridge guy. And I don't know what kind of evidence they have on this other guy. But there's no doubt that Ron Logan was the bridge guy. I don't care what anybody says when I show you some of this and I'm going to make some comments and under fair use. I just want to show this to you and I think you should subscribe to this channel. But anyways, check this out. March 8th, 2017. Redacted. Okay, this is about uh, the females that Ron Logan was with. And listen to what they said. Female 1 was interviewed by law enforcement officials. Redacted Female 1 met Logan about 7 or 8 years ago. Redacted Female 1 was in a personal relationship with Logan for a couple of months and would stay with him in his home on the weekend. Redacted Female 1 left Logan after he became physically abusive. During her interview, Redacted Female 1 explained that Logan continued to stalk and harass Redacted female one, after their breakup. During the relationship, Logan had dragged, redacted female one, out of her car by her hair. Redacted female one, still fears Logan. Redacted female one, has not had contact with Logan in approximately two years. Redacted female one, told interviewers that Logan had told her in the past that he could kill her and no one would find her body. Okay. So, you know, a lot of people say, well, this old man didn't do this. Well, let me tell you something. Uh, he was pretty violent to his exes, so uh, I want to just show you this. And people can argue. I mean, they can say, no way. <clears throat> it wasn't Ron. Get off Ron Logan. Well, I believe it was, and I believe these people this image analysis and detection channel proved it. So check this out. March Oops, I'm on the same one. Sorry, I thought I moved it over. Check this out. Hold on. Let me just go back here for a second. Do not assume that the witnesses saw everyone on the trails on or near the bridge. And I'm going to remind you something again. When we seen the bridge guy, there's no one else on that bridge. And that bridge is quite long. So, sorry. Uh... Okay. No one's been cleared. Watch how they bring his face close up. That is Ron. That is Ron Logan right there. And when you turn his head, you can see his white hair. 
That's Ryan. You can see his mustache. You know, his hat shade and his, if, I don't know if he has his glasses on or not. Um, I think he could have committed this crime by himself. And I believe he has a temper. But I do believe that's Ron Logan. And check out this hat in the exact same He's got the dents in the same place on his hat. Even the same coat. He even wears his collars. The same exact way. Look at same body type. Okay, now let me, hold on. Let me get down here a little bit more. Follow the hat. I'm gonna have to show you. Where's the other one? Uh, right here. I got it too far away. I want you to see something. Gotta back it up. Anyways, they measured him. They're the same exact size. Hold on. Right here. That's Ron on both sides of the bridge guy, and they are the same size. Okay, watch this one. Watch this part here. He's at six foot tall. Okay, now watch. They measured even all this stuff too. Same across, like within a, like within an inch. Okay, he's same height. He has the same hat. I'm telling you, everything. He walks like the bridge guy. Okay, let me go. Fast forward it here. I think it, yeah, I think this is showing his collar. Hold on. Yeah, similar gait, similar body type, similar height, similar weight, similar clothing. I mean, what more do you want? 
Some... Look at that coat. Okay. Now look at the French guy's coat. He's got a flap on it. The same exact flat. Flap. The same exact hat. Same exact chin. I'm telling you. along here. Same hat. The same dance. Hold on here. Check this out. That's Ron. Walks the same way. Hold on, I'm going to take you a little bit further. Hold on. told you I seen that the round thing on the side when I was looking it was over here and I seen it shining in the sun when he was walking you could see it if you look close at his hat okay so hold on here let's see Same voice, same raspiness. Yeah, I think he, I don't know if he had a, an accomplice, but I will tell you this. Uh, bridge guy, whom I believe is Ron Logan. I believe that Ron Logan 
Watch them girls many times come over that bridge. And I believe he had a plan. And he planned it to a T. I believe that he had his weapons with him. And rope or whatever he was going to tie him up with. I believe uh, <clears throat> he knew the exact times. Because he probably seen him come at that time. Because it sounds like. It was a regular thing for those girls to do and their parents to pick them up at a certain time. I believe he had a gun and did this to those girls and then he washed off the blood right in the river. You know, he could have uh, threw his clothes away somehow in that river and they could have went upstream or whatever, but he could have changed right there. He didn't have to wear his coat. He could have took his coat off and did what he needed to do and then just got dressed. He could have did it naked and got dressed and just washed off in the river. And so all the DNA would be off of him. And I think uh, that some people are sick like this. And now other different channels have been talking about... Uh, is this connected to the Evansdale murder, which it very well could be. You know, you never know. Did Ron Logan ever travel in those areas before over there? Because I don't believe that this was the first time that something like this ever happened. But I do believe that Ron had an eye on them girls for a long time. So, and he knew that they he could get him in a place that was, you know, secluded, <clears throat> his own property where no one should be on it. And uh, he could just run right up to the house when he was done. And it's very sad. I feel heartbreak for the family and those girls. And I'm sorry if people get offended about me talking about Ron Logan. These are only my opinions. Nothing is fact. Everyone's innocent until proven guilty. So do not harass anybody. But I do believe, you know, Ron Logan, because he passed away, I still believe that he did this. And I hope someday that they figure it out. There is a lot of political stuff going on in the Delphi case with the police officers and uh, someone shared with me that, you know, there's election stuff and different things going on and someone was demoted. And so I think there's guys that people that are not very happy with the sheriff's decision to, uh, you know, I think that they thought this was Ron Logan a long time ago. And so they took different directions. But it still will be curious to see what they have on Richard Allen. I don't know why Richard Allen would have to <clears throat> plead with the judge for a uh, uh, court-appointed attorney. They're supposed to give him one. You know, he needs one. And they should make sure that he had one. You know, because right now... He's innocent till proven guilty, too. We don't even know if he did anything. So, I mean, they're saying this, but I don't know what they got as proof to prove that he did it. So, whatever. Uh, there's no doubt in my mind that Ron Logan is the bridge guy and that he did this and he got away with it. And, uh, and that's horrible. And I think there would have been other people besides this, so, that he did it to. And, but, you know, if he can throw his ex out of a car, a grown woman, he can, and be abusive, he can do that to these girls. Uh, I don't know if you ever seen a, it, it's a murder case, uh, Perry Winkle. A little girl, her last name was Perry Winkle. And, uh, well, her mother 
some guy, old guy, who had white hair and was older, you know, he asked her, she didn't have enough money to buy her little girl a dress, and he waited out at the Dollar General, and he kidnapped her little girl when they got to Walmart. He promised her a gift card, and he kidnapped and raped this little girl. And you know, it all happened, which was really strange to me, within a two-hour period. That's how fast this happens. So whatever people are going to do to someone when they kidnap them like that, or, you know, these crimes happen so quickly, it's hard to believe, but they do. And, uh, but my point was, is that this guy's name was Don Smith, and you can look this up, but he looked just like an old man. He looked like Ron Logan here with white hair and a white mustache, looking like an old, nice man, right? Like he would never do anything. Well, he raped her, this little girl, and sodomized her and, and strangled her so bad that her eyeballs popped out. And he, he uh, gagged her so tight that her nose and her mouth were bleeding because of it. He raped her, he sodomized her, he beat her, he strangled her. I mean, she was only eight years old. Come on. It's just so sick. But I want the right guy to be uh, blamed for this, and I do believe it's Ron Logan, and that's just my personal opinions, nothing else. Uh, you know, my channel is for discussion uh, only. I'm not monetized, so I'm not making money off this, but I really recommend that you go to Image Analysis and Detection Channel and you check this out because I thought they did an excellent job with, if you watch the whole entire videos of theirs, on Ron Logan, you know. <clears throat> so, I don't know. We have to wait and see until they actually come out with their uh, arrest warrant and what they arrested them with and their proof of how they came to that conclusion. And I'll be interested to see. Uh, so, yeah. I feel that this is the guy, and so I'm trying to prove it. So this is part two of that. So you never know, there might be a part three, but we'll see. Um, but as far as anything else on YouTube, I don't like to get in the drama. You know, I watched Adventures with Purpose for a long time. And I loved all the people on there, and I think they did a great thing. And I'm sorry to hear certain things, but, you know, I don't know. I'm not going to get into it or give you my opinion about it, but I do not like to get... I'm not going to just uh, go by whatever somebody else says, and I'm not going to spread somebody's, you know, personal that kind of information around YouTube. I know that YouTubers really get into doxing people and they get into exposing everybody's, you know, pass on YouTube and spreading it around. They love to slander everybody's name. So these people that are, that do that, that I'm not saying that the guy from Adventures and Purpose is, I'm not defending him. <clears throat> But these people on YouTube that did videos accusing him and saying all kinds of nasty things about him and exposing him, uh, I'd be very careful if I was them because if he does not get charged, he can come back on all these people with major slander lawsuits. You're not, you know, you just got to remember that he can come back back if he's not charged and a lot of people will be in trouble for that 
So hopefully, you know, everything is correct and, you know, so I don't know. Also, uh, these people that are crazy harassing Quentin Simon's family and being their friend, these are you don't even know what they did. They could be terrible criminals, and pe you're standing up for them. I just get really disgusted with these channels, but what really disgusts me is all the people that want to watch her share and different, and all these people that want to watch these channels that are protesting and harassing families and, you know, man, these people are going to get in some serious trouble and they think they're so helpful and they're not helpful at all. They only make things worse for the police. They got enough to do without being bothered by these people there. And that's just really a shame. And I'm sure Cher thinks she's some kind of star because they put a big banner out there for, well, where's the banner for Quentin Simon? Where's the banner for the baby? What are you doing for Quentin? I don't know. I don't get it. But like I said, that's all I'm going to say about it because I'm not going to get into a bunch of YouTube drama because that's all that is. And there's a lot of people who actually love to watch that drama. You know, I can do a video with all kinds of information and not get hardly any views. And these people that put this crap out of protest and harass and others can get thousands of views. I don't get it. Really don't. <laughs> but I guess it's just, you know, what people choose and what people like to watch. I mean, a lot of people like drama. And that's what that is. And that's all that is. And uh, we have to let the police do their job. You know, none of us are police officers and and not Bullhorn Betty or Molly Golightly, none of, Dolly, none of them are police officers and they don't have a right to be out there harassing and bothering these families. And uh, Cher doesn't have no right to be doing wish lists for them and all kinds of crap for them, you know. I, I just don't understand it, everyone, but whatever. We all have to answer for things. But you know what really bugs me a lot is I notice a lot of people who are YouTubers, who have channels, they're criminals or they have criminal backgrounds. I know Cher and her husband have criminal backgrounds. I heard that he's a registered, you know what, her husband I heard that she uh, was abusive. She don't have her children. Uh, all these people that get involved in these missing child cases, they have to do with, you know, SA and uh, abuse. It's just really strange that all these people have inserted themselves when they themselves are predators, it's so scary. It really is. And the people that follow these people, you know, like, why would you want to follow people like that? I don't know. You can look me up. I've never had a criminal record. And uh, I've just been a mom and a grandma. Nothing exciting in my life. I think I had two tickets my entire life and it was for like five over you know I'm, I'm, I'm not I've never broken the law and I don't plan on it either but I just don't understand these people that get into it but anyways uh also, that guy that I showed you, first of all, that was talking about Summer Wells, duh, weekly broadcasts his channel. 
uh, he said uh, that he knows that people have talked about this, that uh, the dogs picked up a scent and they followed the scent, but he said that's not true because he talks to police officers and law enforcement there and they said that's a lie, that that's not true. So, you know, take it for what you want. Uh, but anyways, that's all I have to say. I hope that Summer Wells gets found. Uh, maybe this is a clue that this guy was talking about. Maybe Candace was hiding evidence, you know, uh, of something, of Summer. Um, I don't know. I really hope that we get answers to these cases and Michael Vaughn, that poor little boy. I don't know who did what to him, but we know that he's gone. And bless his heart, you know, Jesus loves all the little children and all those who hurt them are gonna face a heavy judgment. But now, you know, they're with the Lord and I believe that Summer's with Jesus and Michael's with Jesus and prob and Quentin Simon and it's very sad that there's a lot of evil in this world and people would hurt their own children breaks my heart but anyways that's all I have for an update I thank you all for subscribing, for listening, for being here. I love you all, and I hope to talk to you soon in a few days, but uh, keep praying for answers for these people and even for justice for Libby and Abby, you know, what happened to them on this bridge and down by this bridge. It's horrible, and it's very sad, and you know what happened to them happened fast. And so let's pray that we get the right justice for these people because I want the right criminals held responsible, don't you? Okay, have a good night and a good week. Weekend, sorry. Love you. Bye.